I want to show you a couple of things that I've been working on. I, uh, as you know, I've got the Immersion RC Ghost um, external module for my Tyrannus, and I've installed the receivers in a couple of quads. Well, since Ghost has come out, they've had some firmware updates, um, and I've been trying to keep track of you know, what they are um, and trying to keep everything updated. Um, but what I wanted to do recently now is update OpenTX to the Immersion RC version that they've got for Ghost. Um, but I also wanted to update Betaflight to 4.3 so I could use the Ghost uh, protocol in the receiver tab. Um, went ahead and did that. I'm going to show you what I've got. Um, the issue that I had was with the Immersion RC Ghost uh, OpenTX uh, firmware. Um, as soon as I updated to that, uh, I would continuously get uh, um, RSSI issues. Um, you know, RSSI lost, RSSI recovered. You know, same thing you get when you unplug batteries, um, things like that. But the link quality um, was always there. So it was just a communication, I guess, between the ghost module on the transmitter and uh, and OpenTX. So I experimented a ton. Um, what I ended up doing that I found worked was I went back to the released version of OpenTX 2.3 um, but left Betaflight 4.3 and everything still connects, everything still works perfect um, and it solves the uh, warning issue that I was having on the transmitter. I'll try and show some screenshots or something of what I had uh, if I captured them correctly because I was going through a lot of stuff taking a lot of pictures. Um, I'll show you what I've got on my transmitter. Um, I'll show you what I uh, experienced today during flying which was absolutely flawless um, and I'll even put in the like lower probably left hand corner uh, of my video um, my goggle DVR so you can see the link quality and how it changed. Um, I also did upgrade uh, my antenna on my video transmitter, the VTX on the quad. Um, man, I should have done it a long time ago. I didn't realize you know, how bad that uh, antenna was that I was using. It must have gotten broken or something. Who knows? But anyways, let's get into it. I'll show you my transmitter. I'll show you what firmware I've got on there. Um, I'll show you some beta flight uh, screenshots, and then I'll show you my flight video. So here's the portion of the video where I have to give the disclaimer try at your own risk. Um, I'm not responsible for any of the uh, screw-ups um, that may happen uh, as you go through this procedure. I took my own risk doing this. Um, I'm not an expert by no means and uh, hey it's all for fun. Um, but anyways just remember do this at your own risk. So first what I did um, is I went to the Immersion RC website as you can see here I scroll down to uh, version 1.0.1.2, um, read through all the release notes, and then you see at the bottom here, Beta Flight 4.3 daily build is recommended for t uh, telemetry support. And they also recommend uh, the OpenTX Immersion RC branch for the Ghost tools. And again, I ended up uh, going back to OpenTX 4. Point, excuse me, OpenTX 2.3 release. So I downloaded the tools here, and then uh, I went back, uh, Betaflight 4.3, daily builds. Um, you'll need to go to uh, GitHub uh, to get the um, Betaflight Configurator 10.8, which is what you need for uh, Betaflight 4.3 firmware on your uh, flight controllers. So downloaded it here. You can see it's downloading. And then once that's done, uh, obviously you have to install it. You know, I went ahead and opened the program. And again, do this at your own risk. This is a nightly build, so you might have to keep up with uh, some of the updates. Um, this is something I just wanted to try on my own. Um, and again, do this at your own risk. So I opened Betaflight. Uh, I wanted to go in and verify what flight controller I had, what version it was. You can see here, I'm checking it out. Um, I updated firmware. You have to turn on the expert mode and uh, in release 
you'll find nothing but 4.2. So, and I double checked. Uh, and again, you have to get into development mode uh, to get to Betaflight 4.3 options. Then you go through the same process. Load firmware online, um, update firmware. You can uh, install it. Um, I did a uh, CLI dump, just did the diff all. Um, I know that's probably not the best way to do it, um, but I did go through line by line and double check. Um, again, I wanted to double check my UARTs, everything was connected correctly. Um, and you can see here, I've now got uh, the option for serial based receivers and IRC Ghost. So, a little bit of a rundown there. When I installed Betaflight 4.3, everything still did seem to carry over properly. I went back through, checked rates, uh, checked receiver tab, um, you know, made sure everything worked, made sure all my switches worked. Uh, went into motors tab and made sure that everything there was working properly. Let's take a look at some of the flight video.